Okay. So, okay. So I'm very pleased uh, to have Jerome with us, Jerome Dakir from from the University of Montreal, Université de Montréal, in Belgium. Namur. Huh? Namur. University of Namur, not Montreal. <laughs> University of Namur, yeah, in Belgium. And uh, and uh, and we congratulate him for the uh, for the success in getting the job. And we are very much looking forward for this wonderful lecture. Please, uh, John, from Thank you. So you you see my screen, right? And it, it feels a bit weird because I haven't used the, the tablet yeah. uh, since uh, since the pandemic. So I might be a bit rusty with it, but I'm gonna try to do my best. So before I start, I would like to acknowledge uh, Stefanella for the kind invitation and uh, the people who have been involved in um, organizing this um, this event. Uh, so the title uh, the title of my lecture today is uh, chaos and um, computational methods computational methods uh, for portraying uh, face spaces so i'm gonna use the, the wacom and write most of what I say. I'm not a big fan of slides presentation, so I might be a bit slow, but I mean, that's what it is. Um, so I have used uh, a few references that I would like to uh, point out first. Uh, I have used the book of uh, De Vane, which is rather classical in the field. So it's a book of De Vane, which is uh, an introduction to uh, chaotic dynamical systems. Um, I have used as well some lecture notes of uh, uh, Professor Timoteo Caletti here at the University of Namur, of Timoteo Caletti. We have a nice course on qualitative aspects of dynamical system, and, and I have used these notes. And I have also used lecture notes of uh, Professor Massimiliano Guzzo from the University Massimiliano Guzzo from the University of Padova. All right. Uh, so the outline of the talk and my expectation are the following. So uh, we will gently start uh, by discussing some um, qualitative aspects of uh, chaotic dynamics, chaotic dynamics, sorry, based on the well-known uh, and quite paradigmatic uh, logistic model, chaotic dynamics based on the logistic model. And by the way, if the writing is too small, just let me know quickly as well, right? Um, we will talk about, uh, I mean, how to measure chaos in practice through Yapunov exponents. And I will talk as well on um, variational methods to portray face spaces. And later on, uh, probably during the, the final lecture, uh, I will describe, uh, I will talk about non-variational methods for chaos detection. All right. So uh, it's kind of smooth. So let us start. Um, so as I say, we start with some uh, qualitative aspects uh, based on the logistic model. 
So by the way, I haven't mentioned it, but I have prepared the, the lectures for a quite broad audience. So maybe, I mean, things are quite known for experts, but I have tried to, to uh, well, to, to, to be able to talk to a broad audience, given that there are some students as well here, so. Yeah. So uh, the logistic We model, have undergraduate here, so also. Ah, so that's good, yeah. So, so the logistic map is defined. Uh, so it's a discrete mapping as uh, x at time n plus one is equal to a function of the state x at time n. And uh, it's a quadratic model one dimensional, uh, it's equal to mu xn one minus xn. And this model uh, has some roots uh, and I won't, I won't introduce where the model comes from, but uh, it has some roots in, uh, let's say, uh, biological dynamics. And it was introduced in a, a seminal work of Robert May. And the paper is simple mathematical model. Models, sorry, plural, with very complicated dynamics. So in this paper, you can see the roots of, of, of this equation, uh, nature 60, 66. Uh, so the phase space, so in, in suitable units, uh, all the xn are smaller than one. And uh, well, the, uh, the, so, so this model, this model is, uh, let's say, um, it gives you the, the growth of uh, of some species from generation to generation, generation to generation. So, so we see X as a, let's say a, a population. So the population is uh, is, is positive, and uh, so the state based state space sorry omega is uh, the unit interval, and. Uh, so uh, f mu, if uh, in order to have f mu going from omega to omega, you need to uh, you need to force mu to be in zero form. So mu is is a parameter is a parameter here. So mu is a parameter. So we have this simple mapping one dimensional, quadratic, depending on one param parameter mu, uh, living in, uh, in zero, the interval zero four. Uh, so for one, for one dimensional uh, discrete system, we have, let's say, a graphical way to explore the dynamics which is called the cobweb, cobweb method. Uh, so for one dimensional discrete system, uh, in general, given by X n plus one is equal to capital F of X n. Uh, let's say one can, oops, one can infer the dynamics. Uh, infer slash uh, visualize the dynamics uh, using the graphical method, which is called uh, called the cobweb plot. The cobweb plot. So the easiest way to introduce the cobweb method is to, to look at a very simple dynamics and, and you will, you will uh, quickly understand how it works. So the cobweb plot, plot sorry, which 
uses uh, the graph of, of the uh, dynamics, the graph of the function capital F and the first diagonal. So let me show you on one specific example. So consider, for example, the very simple linear 1D um, dynamical system, Xn plus one is equal to A times Xn, where A, let's say, is greater than one. So what is a cobweb plot associated to, to this dynamical system? So you will plot Xn as a function of Xn plus one. You will use the first diagonal and the graph of f that I'm plotting now. So uh, f of x is ax and a is greater than one. So it's above the first diagonal. So this is y is equal to ax, right? And then what do you do? Uh, you start with one initial condition, x not. Uh, you know that under the dynamics, x1 is equal to a of x that you can see here. And then you use the first diagonal to construct the next point. So this is x1, and then you repeat the story. So f of x1, you can find it uh, well, using the graph, and then again, that's x2, and then you project the value of x2 using the first diagonal, and so on. So, so the orbit in that case will be something like this. So you start here, and then you bounce like that, and you see that you 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 will diverge. So qualitatively, it's easy to to see. Uh, we we see that uh, x n goes to uh, plus infinity was when n is uh, going to infinity as well. And in other words, the origin zero is a repelling fixed point. And it's not really a surprise because if you compute the derivative of f, uh, which is capital, uh, which is A, the modulus is greater than one. So you, you have something which is unstable. In a similar way, uh, I can show you a second example of a cobweb plot, also on a linear model, but this time where zero becomes an attracting, attracting fixed point. So you, you define Xn plus one is equal to A, of xn, but this time a is smaller than one. Again, we will use the first diagonal. We plot the graph of the dy dynamics of the function capital F. So this is y is equal to ax. Oops, with a smaller than one. So you are below the first diagonal. You select, for example, this initial condition x0, its image is x1 given by this point. And then you use the first diagonal to project. This is the new seed. And again, you compute x2. And then my graph will become very quickly messy. And you, you don't see much. So you start here. And then you are bouncing towards uh, the origin, right? In other words, zero here. So xn goes to zero when n goes to plus infinity. Zero is uh, an attracting fixed point, right? Um, so we can use this method this graphical method to explore numerically the dynamics 
of the logistic map. And I will show you now a few pictures. And uh, well, Stefanella just told us that we have some graduate students in the audience. So I would encourage the, the students to reproduce by themselves the, the pictures I will show um, right now. So um, we now use this uh, cobweb. Uh, technique to investigate, let's say, uh, heuristically, so to speak, oops, to investigate the dynamics of the logistic map. All right, so. Um, So what I do is the following. Um, I will share now. Do you see one orbit in the cobweb plot? Yes? Yes. Perfect. Okay, I guess now it's too big. Do you see it right now? Is that fine for you at your scale? Good. So, uh, oh, and I will even try to do this. Oh, wonderful. So you see both right now, right? Mm, right. Yes. So uh, this is, let's say, I, I start playing with this, this is a cobweb, cobweb method. And what I do is the following, uh, I set the parameter mu to a specific value, and then we will slightly increase the, the, the value of, of mu. So I start here with mu is equal to uh, 0.5. And by the way, uh, I need to simulate the dynamics. So I, I fix, let's say the final time n and max, the maximal number of iteration to 60, now I'm doing, I'm doing a, a numerical experiment. So I need to have some threshold. So I put the final time to 60 and I always select the initial condition X naught that we have been playing here and here to uh, X naught is equal to 0 0.1, right? If you want to change this value, you are welcome to do it uh, on your side. All right, so I, I put mu equal to 0 0.5 and on the left-hand side on my screen, and maybe it's reversed on your side, I don't know, you see both the orbit, so the time evolution of, let's say, the, 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 the size of the population and, uh, and the cobweb plot. So for mu is equal to 0 0.5, you see that basically the population get extinct, extinct, extinct. You see it settles down to zero, so we, everyone's dying. Uh, and, and you see on the cobweb plot that you converge uh, towards the, the origin, which is a, an attracting fixed point here. Now I do the same, but, but I change the value to, uh, to mu is equal to two. Uh, so here, what you see is that, well, again, based on, on the numerical experiment, you see that the population uh, converge, converges to, uh, let's say, to an equilibrium state. And uh, which is, in that case, equal to x star is equal to 0 0.5. And again, you see the, uh, the corresponding uh, jumps into the, uh, the cobweb plot. Ah, I cannot draw on the figures, all right, whatever. Uh, now I do the same, I increase mu again. So I increase mu to uh, 3.1, and you have these, uh, these orbits. Uh, so here you see 
that you have a, a, a period to orbit in the sense that the, the, the population alternates between two possible values in the long term. Uh, something between 0.7 here and something slightly below 0.6. So you have a period to orbit and you see the meaning of, of, of what a, a period to orbit is in a cobweb plot where you see this, uh, this, this square cycle, right? Uh, and now I increase again mu to 3.5. Again, you can reproduce all of these figures on your side. Uh, so here you have, uh, well, I don't know if you can see it uh, nicely on, on, on your screen and at your scale, but you see that you have a period four orbit. So the final values oscillate between four possible states. And you can see this four cycle in the cobweb plot as well below. And now I increase one more time mu to the final value allowed, which is four. And I obtain this orbit and this cobweb plot. And here it's not really clear if we have a periodic orbit, at least we cannot recognize that by, let's say by visual inspection, periodic orbit, not clear. And you see that in the cobweb plot, uh, again, visually speaking, I know that it's not really rigorous, but I mean, visually speaking, you don't see a specific patterns as we have seen before, so no. I mean, specific by specific pattern, I mean uh, the, the cycle we have seen. So the nice square or two cycle, etc. No specific cycle. No specific cycle. Uh, and by the way, uh, an observation we can do as well is that the values taken by by the uh, population, I mean, covers the whole range of, of the state base. So you, you, you see that, I mean, it seems that the final value might reach any value between uh, zero and one. So you have a kind of macroscopic dynamics as well. So the whole range of values are, are seem to be taken. Uh, all right, so that's, um, let's say, a, a visual and numerical exploration of, of the cobweb plot um, um, on the logistic model. And you see that, uh, well, it's not very efficient uh, to do this, this, this kind of plot. So each time I change new, I have to, uh, to generate a new plot. So instead, what uh, one prefer to do is to uh, derive the uh, bifurcation diagram, and that's what I'm gonna describe now. So uh, we can, let's say, condensate uh, those plots, so to speak, by looking instead by looking by looking instead at the bifurcation diagram. So what do I mean with this? By the way, but at the, uh, I'm gonna talk about here the, the numerical bifurcation diagram. So the, the bifurcation diagram obtained numerically. Numerical. So what do I do? Uh, for a given x naught, so for a given initial condition, uh, I will plot. I will plot uh, the point x n with n larger 
or equals an, a, a large a large time n uh, where n is let's say sufficiently large and of course n is smaller than a, a, a specific final time which is finite as I'm dealing with a computer. Uh, so, so what do I do? I plot, let's say, the, the values of the dynamics after killing a transient uh, dynamics, right? So this is a, the role played by capital N. I ignore, I ignore, let's say, the, the initial initialization of the dynamics and then so the transient, and then I plot the final values. And I will show you what we get uh, in doing this. And by the way, we plot those values as a function, as a function, and that's a key point, this time of mu. Uh, so in the picture I will show you, I have set n max to 1000 and capital N, I believe, yeah, large enough. So let's say to 600. So I look at the Q of the dynamics. Uh, so, and I obtain this very famous bifurcation diagram. And maybe that's the first time for the uh, graduate students that you see that. So maybe I will describe what we see. Uh, so the pity is that I cannot write for some reason on the, on the pictures itself. So what you see, you see uh, the final value of xn as a function of mu. Um, and uh, so how do we interpret and link these pictures with what we have observed before? So remember, I started by showing you a picture starting with mu is equal to 0 0.5, which is here. And we found that the population was going, uh, was dying. That's what we see here. The, the final value allowed by the dynamics is, is zero. Then I, had, I increased earlier the uh, parameter to two, and we saw that the population was saturating to a specific value equal to 0 0.5, which is consistent with what we see here. Um, I showed you a, a period to orbit, which is interpreted here with the birth of the two branches you see after the uh, value equal to mu equal three. And then I have shown you as well a, a four periodic orbit that you can recognize here. And then you see basically, uh, well, tough things where the final values seem to belong to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an open interval. Uh, so you can, you can uh, redo this kind of bifurcation diagrams at smaller and smaller scale to have uh, a better understanding of what's going on. So here, what I will show you is a zoomed in portion of this phase space, this Location diagram, sorry, between mu equal to three and mu equal to four. And here you, you probably see better the, uh, the period to orbits, the period for orbits, and uh, well, and the, 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 the period doubling bifurcations. You see as well that uh, you seem to have some, uh, uh, some, some windows, so to speak, of stability in between. And I show you here the bifurcation diagram uh, at a smaller scale. Um, and you see that you might even find period three orbits. As you can see here, you have three branches for a given mu. You have a period three orbit, which is, uh, let's say, um, in between uh, what I what I call interval-like uh, dynamics, where, where you don't recognize uh, specific branches and lines. Uh, so of course we can explain we can explain analytically uh, a few things we have observed here. 
So let us let us try to reconstruct analytically the, uh, this bifurcation diagram. So um, what do we do? Uh, as usual, we first try to uh, find the fixed points of the dynamics. So uh, we solve xn plus one is a new xn is a new xn one minus xn is equal to xn. So we are looking at the fixed point and I will just remove the time. I don't need it. So if you solve that for x, you have two, two solutions, either x is equal to zero or you have you find that x of mu is equal to one minus one over mu or mu not equal to zero. And once you have the fixed point, uh, you usually look at the uh, local stability. So stability, so you compute the derivative of, uh, of L mu prime, derivative I not by prime uh, is equal to uh, mu one minus two X. Uh, and what do we have? So we have that L, L prime uh, at zero, which is equal to, uh, to mu, right? And the mu, if I take the absolute value, is smaller than one for what? For mu is smaller than one. If I look at the sign of the uh, derivative evaluated along the second branch of solution, I let you uh, I let you check that what I'm writing is is correct. You will find that you will be discussing the sign of absolute value of mu minus mu, and this quantity is smaller than one if and only if. Mu is between one and three. Smaller than one, we uh, mean stability. Right? So uh, you can draw at least the first part of the, let's say, analytical bifurcation diagram, so to speak. So you will be plotting the final state of the function of mu. So uh, for mu, for mu smaller than one, we say that zero is stable. So that's what I'm showing here with a, uh, with let's say a plain line, and usually we use dashed line to refer to the unstable solution. So yeah, I'm using the convention that plane is stable and dashed line is unstable. Uh, and we saw a second branch whose equation is one minus, one mi minus, uh, one minus one over mu, sorry that I'm drawing here, uh, and this branch is stable for mu smaller than three. So you have something like this. So this is one minus one over mu for mu between one and three. And then after three, this branch becomes unstable, right? So that's the, uh, The, the stability, the bifurcation diagram associated to the uh, fixed point. So the periodic orbit, let's say of period one. Uh, can we do more? Yes, because now we can look. We can look at period two orbits. So, uh, 
So period two orbits, I will have to find the fixed point of uh, F composed by itself, so of, its, of F square. So um, period two orbits are solution of F square uh, of X, which is F of F of X is equal to X. Uh, so F of F of X, this is a mu, uh, mu X one minus X times one minus F of X mu X one minus X. So I have to solve this is equal to X. And this is, this has degree four. So that's a bit annoying, but if you use a formal manipulator, this is, uh, quite easy. So um, you use a formal manipulator. to save you time and energy. And if you use the uh, formal manipulator, you will find that uh, that the roots of F square of X equal to X are given by Uh, given by so again you will find out x equal to zero which is a, a period one solution we found earlier you will find x is equal to one minus one over mu the same as we found before and uh, uh, and you will have two more solution as well uh, given by and I let you this as an exercise exercise as well so check that. What time writing here is correct. Uh, it should be uh, plus minus square root of mu square minus two, two mu plus three plus minus mu plus one over two mu. And again, I haven't written it. Mu, sorry, mu not equal to zero, mu not equal to zero. Uh, yes. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, uh, geometrically. So you can convince yourself as well that uh, in fact, we have four fixed points by drawing um, the graph of F square for mu uh, close to three. So um, now I'm, 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 I'm sketching, I'm sketching F square of mu for mu close to three. And you have something like this. Um, So uh, this will be smaller than one and you will have, so that's a bit tough. So I'm putting here the first diagonal and you will find something like this, oops. So this is for mu is equal to three. And when mu is slightly greater than three, you have uh, four fixed points. So you know that you, sorry, you have to cross four times. So you, you still have zero. But now you are so this this shape goes below the first uh, the first diagonal. So you will find something like this. So you have four 
except points. Uh, all right. So now, now that you have uh, this expression for the uh, fixed point of f square, as as earlier, you can you can sorry, you can uh, look at the stability. And again, uh, you will have. Uh, I will go a bit quickly here. Uh, when so, I have to stop at what time, uh, Stefanella? Usually is is one hour, so it's uh, so till seven, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, let's time is seven. So you still have twenty minutes. Sure. Okay. Great. Yeah. So uh, stability, you have to discuss the sign of pi, uh, which is a product of of uh, the various derivatives uh, evaluated at. Uh, the fixed point. So I wrote them x plus minus before times df of x plus minus, uh, which is equal again. Some exercise for you. Check that what I'm writing is is correct, but it should be correct. Is equal to minus mu square plus two mu plus. So you have to discuss the sign of this quantity. I need a new page. I need a new page. I need a new page. And I claim that uh, for, for mu in a neighborhood of, of three, so for mu, uh, in a neighborhood of three. How do you write neighborhood in a, do you use capital V or capital U usually in Brazil? Stefanella, you or what? Hello, yeah. So how do you, what's the standard notation for neighborhood of a point? U or capital V? Uh, I'm sorry, because there is, there is a, what is the standard notation for? For neighborhood of a point, the, the vicinity ah, of the a point. Ah, the neighborhood of the point. Um, you use U or capital V? Uh, whatever, the two Whatever, of them. so this, yes, yes. this, okay, vicinity, whatever. Vicinity of three. So I claim that for mu close to uh, three, but slightly above, uh, um, capital pi, so pi is, is, is smaller than one. So the branches are stable. So what does it mean? It means that you can now. Uh... Uh, Shuro? Yes? I'm sorry. Can you just comment for them uh, which method are you using to calculate uh, the stability? Yeah, I, I, I'm evaluating the, the partial at the, uh, at the solution. I'm just for the student. Yeah, so basically it's more or less what is contained in this uh, in this plot. So imagine you have a, a, a fixed point. What do you do? You linearize close to the point. So you will find, so you, you linearize uh, close to your point and then you evaluate the derivative at the fixed point solution, and you are either in one of these two cases, either you end up talking about this dynamics where A is greater than one or A, A uh, smaller than one. And depending on the case, you say that the fixed point is stable or unstable. So attracting or repelling, right? So that's what I'm doing now here for the period to orbit. But for the period to orbit, you have to compute the product of the derivative evaluated along the solution that you computed. So this product. Now I'm talking about this product of derivative evaluated uh, along the solution, iteration of the solution. Okay. Uh, 
So now I can, so we used to have this diagram and now we can update it. So as usual, I mean, as before, we found that zero is stable for mu smaller than one. Sorry, this is mu. And unstable dashed line for mu greater than one. We found that one branch given by one minus one over mu was stable. So a plain, plain line for mu between one and three and unstable for mu greater than three. And we find out that the period two orbits are stable. So plane line at least close to three. That's what I just said here. For mu close to three, the product of this derivative is smaller than one. So you know that the uh, pair to orbit is stable. And after, it's not that clear. But in theory, you could uh, iterate this analysis, even though it is a bit tricky because when you will look, for example, at period four orbits, you will have to find the root of f square of x is equal to x. But f square of x is now a polynomial which has a degree, I don't know, probably eight or so. So we have to look, but quite large. So it's not, not that straightforward and uh, not straightforward to, uh, let's say, derive the, 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 the branches of the uh, bifurcation diagram. Nevertheless, uh, we know that the uh, phenomena we just saw here, so the passage from a, a, a periodic orbit of period one to a, a periodic orbit of period two, we know that there is an infinite number of this bifurcation. So there is an infinite number. And in the jargon, we say of period doubling bifurcation. Giving birth to two periodic orbits of period two, four, giving birth to periodic orbits of period two, four, two plus two uh, to the power k, sorry. Etc. cetera, uh, at values mu is equal to mu k. And we also know, even though I won't discuss it into details today, that those mu k, um, they accumulate to mu infinity, which is the accumulation point of this pair doubling this bifurcation of this period doubling bifurcation. And we can compute or estimate this number and it is close to- He will turn a test. No, I think English, but loco is... Any comments or just interference? Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. So, um, and uh, so this is now from, from theory, let's say, and we also know that for mu, 
uh, sorry, for mu between for uh, for mu infinity mu for uh, the dynamics. The dynamics of the logistic map is predominantly chaotic. And now we will define what do you mean by chaotic? So meaning of that, uh, I define here yeah, the, 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 the notion of chaos uh, a la de Manet, uh, So what do we mean by chaotic? Uh, we say that a map F uh, from a set V to V, sorry, is said, a map V to V is said to be chaotic on V if we have three things. If uh, if we have the following uh, fact, uh, so F as sensitive dependence on initial conditions that I wrote I C. Condition number two is that F is topologically transitive. And I will define in a minute the two notions. And three, F, uh, sorry, the periodic orbits, the set of periodic orbits is dense in V. So uh, set of, to, to save time periodic orbit, I use PO. So the set of periodic orbits is dense. So what do we mean by sensitive dependence? Oh, by the way, before I, before I go forward. Um, so when we refer to chaos a la Devane, we usually have in mind these three conditions. Even though we know that they are redundant. So we got a paper in 92, and this is a remark. Remark a, a, a paper in 92 by Banks et al. They showed that condition two plus three, if you are condition two and three, automatically you have one, one, condition one. But nevertheless, when we refer to the concept of chaos a la Devane, we usually uh, mention the three, let's say, uh, hypothesis, even though the first one is, is redundant. Uh, so now let me quickly, let me, uh, what I will do for the uh, rest of my time, I will define uh, what is condition one, the notion of sensitive dependence on initial condition. I will define what does it mean condition two. And uh, I would like to show that uh, at least for mu is equal to four as a logistic map as sensitive dependence on initial condition. But I don't know if I will have time to do it. If not, I will do it next time. So. Uh, definition of the uh, first hypothesis, uh, sensitivity to initial condition. So F from V to V as sensitive dependence 
on initial combination. Uh, if, if you can find delta, which is a, a positive quantity, such that for x, for all, sorry, a point x in your set V, uh, you have a neighborhood V of x, uh, such that there is a point y, which is in this neighborhood, such that uh, x and y will become section of the dynamics. So there is a point y, such that you can find a time for which fn of x minus fn of y is greater than the uh, threshold delta. So the dynamics, let's say, separates the points. Okay, so that's the, the, the idea behind this concept. So the points are separated again, the points becomes separated under the uh, iteration of the dynamics. What do we mean by transitivity? So we say that F again from the set V2V is again to save time, I'm using shortcuts now, is topologically transitive. TT, right? So F of uh, from V to V is TT. Uh, if if uh, when you take two open sets I and G in V, if for all A and G open sets in V. the image of I under iteration of the dynamics F intersected to, to the, uh, the, the, the second set J is, is, is different from the uh, empty set. Okay? So what is the, uh, uh, let's say, the the meaning of, of, of this definition as uh, the intuition behind is that let's say set I moves under the action of G of F. And more, more importantly, you cannot decompose the, uh, the state, state space, sorry, uh, with some invariance set. Right, so the decomposition into invariant sets is not possible. So if it's not clear, uh, I don't know if the concept of invariant set is clear for uh, the audience. So what do we mean by invariant set? Let's say, uh, and yes, I should specify, AI is an invariant set for F, if, for let's say F, F yes, for F, if FK of, of A is included into A, right? So here you cannot do that. So you cannot decompose the uh, state space into invariant sets. So somehow the uh, chaos à la Devane. So you, you have three ingredients. The first one is the dynamics separate the points. The second ingredient is that you cannot decompose the state space into uh, invariant sets. And the last ingredient speaks for itself, so I don't have to, to write it, but it's, it's a bit uh, striking because somehow it is, a, it is an element of regularity because you ask periodic orbits, and usually we, we like when we have periodic orbits, so it, it structures the, the state base, but you, you ask the periodic orbit to be dense. 
But the fact is that those periodic orbits, they might be unstable. So they will push you away. So that, let's say, is the uh, intuition behind this, this definition. Uh, so I guess I will stop now, uh, Stefanella, as I, uh, I guess it's time. Maybe I will write what I will do next time, and then I will close uh, yeah. after this and take yeah. any questions. Uh, yeah. But if, if I still have time, you tell me, right? See, up to you. Uh, anyway, so I have time to continue or I ju just should say what I'm going to do next time? Uh, maybe better just to say next time. Okay, sure. So what I'm going to show, what I'm going to talk about next time, and it's pretty nice. And if you want to prepare the lecture, uh, you can have some uh, directions. So next time, um, I will, uh, we will demonstrate this proposition, uh, which is pretty nice. I mean, the proof is pretty nice, which is that uh, for mu is equal to four, uh, L mu, so the proposition is this one, but I won't prove the whole proposition. So the proposition is for mu is equal to four, L mu is chaotic on V is equal to zero one. And what I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna just explain next time, because the argument is pretty nice, is uh, why, at least how can we see that we have a, a, a sensitivity to initial condition for mu is equal to, to four. So next time I will start by showing, I will show next time, I will show next time that L mu has sensitivity to initial condition for mu is equal to four. So next time I will restart from there. And you will see that the argument is, is, uh, is very nice. And for now, uh, well, I, I stop here and I am of course happy to take uh, any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a great lecture. So let's uh, thank uh, uh, Jerome. <clears throat> very clear. Uh, Helena, uh, yes, I guess it's very late for you in the Emirates. Uh, thank you, Helena. <laughs> so uh, are there any questions? Yes, uh, Jean-François, please. Okay, so, yes, so thank you very much, uh, Jerome, for your talk. I was wondering about uh, orbits of hot periods. So can we find for, so no matter which hot integer we take, can we find some parameter mu so that the orbit will have this hot periodicity, for instance, three, five, seven, and so on? Uh, well, I, I believe the answer is yes, but I am not very sure. I'm not 100% sure, but, uh, you see here, do you still see my, yes. my screen, right? Yes. So yes. this is a zoom in, uh, portion of the bifurcation diagram for mm -hmm. you between the two values you see here. Yeah. And what you see is the period three orbit, right? Which is mm -hmm. yes. the first odd uh, periodic orbit. Yeah. Yeah. And you see yeah. that, well, you see, maybe I should do a, a better plot, but it seems at least that this period three goes to a period one, two, three, four, five, six. So it doesn't- mm -hmm. yes, the No, no, mm -hmm. your question was if I go to five, right? Yes, for instance, so if we take an odd integer, so <sighs> five, seven, can we always find some parameter mu so, such that we will have this periodicity? I guess so, but I, I, I have to check. 
I have to check, but I, it might be a known result, yes. Maybe okay. Stefanella knows, and please uh, correct me, Stefanella, or... Sorry, Jerome? So I was saying that maybe you know the answer, and you can you can answer to, uh, to Jean-Francois about the existence of periodic orbit of period of any period. Uh, ah, yes, no, I had, I actually, I had the same, I have the same uh, answer. Why it has, to, <laughs> has to be even, I have to think also, because that was my immediate. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, there, was a, there was a reason, but I have to think. Uh, I think it's, a, it's because of the parity of the, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. there is a quadratic equation. So I think it has to do with the degree of mm -hmm. the equation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will I will keep your question, Jean Francois, and maybe I will start mm -hmm. uh, next yeah. time by answering Thank it. You. Uh, Thank you. I, I know that a known a known property is uh, the one we usually refer as period three implies chaos. So okay. once you have a period three orbit, we know that you will bifurcate towards chaos. Okay, interesting. So okay. this you can Google easily, and, and for mm -hmm. the rest, I need to think uh, about it a bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but it, it is a great question. I, I had the same thought. Uh, why? <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, but there, there was a, I've seen somewhere an explanation of this, but uh, yeah, I forgot. But it's good. It's excellent. So, Jerome, uh, uh, it was very clear. So maybe if after you can send us these notes with the figure, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you want it now or at the end of the? No, 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 no. <laughs> it can it can be later. Later on at, at the end but of maybe, the lecture. If maybe it's possible to send us some of these reference. Sure. Like uh, Timothy notes, I think it may be very nice. Uh -huh. Yeah, I will ask yeah, you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Should I go? Should I go a bit faster next time? No, or for no, the I think it's, no, no, I think it's great I because uh, there are some undergraduate and or some people that were not yeah. so exposed to dynamical systems. So it was great that you gave yeah. all the. Uh, I think this sensitive, uh, this uh, transitivity, it can be maybe illustrated with the drawing. Uh, I always see with the drawing. It's coming. Uh, okay. It's coming okay. next week. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Uh, uh, okay, great. So uh, I will see you actually on Thursday this week <laughs> for Correct. for for another lecture. Uh, really much looking forward. It was really great, uh, very clear. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank see you, you next time. See you uh, in two days. Bye bye. Sure. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye bye. Thank you.